Chairman, um, members will be familiar with this uh, application um, which came before the committee at, at, the, last, uh, at the last meeting. Um, I have all of the slides if you would like to see them. I don't intend to go through them because I think you've seen them before. Um, just to recap, the, the, the issues that were discussed and the reasons for a deferral at the last um, meeting were concern over the coastal erosion and the management of that erosion and um, so the item was deferred to give officers the opportunity to explore those issues further and also to bring to the committee the wording of the section 106 agreement. So in the updated report you'll see there's a, there's a, a new introduction and then at uh, section um, D there are a couple of extra paragraphs uh, explaining um, the, uh, the, 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 the erosion risk um, with respect to the public open space on the southern edge of the site uh, and uh, also informing you that the applicant has agreed to um, enter into uh, section 106 to secure a financial contribution of £25,000 and that would be secured towards coastal management measures. Um, the other new bit of information uh, is the wording of the section 106 and that's provided in the update to you. I, I know it's unusual for us to bring to you the exact wording of legal agreements but in this instance I hope you consider that it was important to do so. What I've done is I've given you the definition of the public open space management plan which is important and then the clauses in the schedule that, that basically spells out the obligations to the um, applicant in respect of that public open space. Um, and effectively, the majority of those clauses just seek to ensure that the, the development takes place in accordance with the public open space management plan and is maintained in accordance with that plan. There are a couple of extra clauses um, to mean that um, to retain control over how the public open space is managed and even owned in that it, it could not be um, divided up and put into separate ownership away from the other common parts of the development. Uh, and as a package, um, we're satisfied that that should address the concerns that were expressed previously. But I'm happy to take any questions if I'm so we were just a couple of things as well. Yeah. Yeah. We've removed, we've, we've removed the suggestion to put um, fencing in the southern boundary. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. I, yeah, as I said at the last meeting, I fully support the development of this site. Desperately needs to be done sooner than later um, because it's a complete and utter mess there. Um, I personally think I, I will accept that they're now offering £25,000. Personally, I think they'll offer more than that, but that's as it is. Uh, but I will accept that situation. My, I suppose, only concern is, is the wording of 2.7, but it, it's, in, it's in legal wording. And what worries me is that the layout of the open space at the bottom will be done because it will have to be done before the properties can be occupied. Uh, it will be maintained for uh, a year or so, and then the um, company that it's been handed to by the developers will go bust uh, or something or cause them not to want to bother with it anymore and it will then come back to us uh, to, to actually maintain and when one work, reads the wording here now Crossstone Properties is the company who's applying for the planning consent but I bet a pound to a penny almost that they won't be the developers of this particular site. Because they transfer originally? So uh, when it says here that all its successors in title incur in taking in taking these steps, I, I, I don't think there's anything more we can do. It, this is a, a legal document and I think it's tied down as probably as far as you can go. But I do have concerns that at the end of the day the public purse will have to pick up at some point in the future the cost of maintaining that land, and I don't see why we should, so they could make more profit. That's my concern, um, but I will accept it. Okay. Anyone else? Just, just 
Where would this 25,000 sit? With the eastern side of the coast of the park? Well, sit in the pot. Yeah. Separately. I'm yeah. wary about pots because they're accessible. No. I've already asked that question. I think it stays in a separate pot for this scheme. It doesn't. It can't be vied away to the, the no, nice new yeah. facilities over yeah. in the west of Wolves. Well, we, we've got used to it. Okay. But we've got one Wolves actually. I mean, this scheme may never come about, presumably. No. So what happens to twenty-five thousand? No, it's not. Can they claim it back after a time if it's not used? scheme doesn't go ahead, the payment doesn't happen. It's not just set aside for a, for a sea, sea defence. defence works. It's, it's for work if the land erodes, for instance, if yeah, the stuff starts to come out, it can be used to cap that again or something. Sorry, I think you mean the sea defence scheme. Sorry, I don't think that. The scheme, the, the, the proposal. It sits in the park gaining 0.5%. <laughs> We've got a bit of sea defence in 300 years time. <laughs> Okay. Councillor Keeble. Oh, just a quick one, Chairman, because I wasn't just present at the October meeting, but I, looking through this section on the affordable housing provision, can I just have clarification? Are we getting any out of it? Is there a bit of contribution? Or, uh, no, no, no. Because with 24 properties, I thought the Berkshire uh, no. decision was only on a no. seven minutes. No, it's to do with the existing values of the site with the buildings on it. Right. So, so viability still is as crucified as yet again? Yeah, in a different way. Councillor Bart. I just my own satisfaction really look to see if the officer would respond to Councillor Price's assertion that in 2.7 the wording isn't strong enough to keep the liability with the developer. I understand that Councillor Price's concern and I share it and it was what was expressed last time and is really why I think the item was deferred from the last meeting. So my hope is that 2.7 is uh, a strong uh, condition or requirement that will avoid the future erosion costs coming back on the public first. So I think I appreciate that the work has been done to try to achieve that. I am not a lawyer, but is the officer happy that we have got what we wanted to have, which is that uh, deflection of risk from the council to the developer? Uh, in response to the, the councillor's um, concerns, the, the um, clause at 2.7 grants the council the ability to uh, to carry out the maintenance of the land, basically take over the maintenance of the land um, should the maintenance plan not be adhered to and then charge either the applicant or the successor in title. Um, it doesn't relate to uh, combating erosion, it re relates to the maintenance of, of that public open space. Ask the question of our legal people for standing trust. If the management company take over that, does it still is the land still retained in ownership by the original outfit who built the properties, or does it the ownership transfer to the management company? In which case, if anything went wrong, we'd be chasing the management company for the cost of repairs or whatever. How does that work? Do they still own the site, or do they hand it over to the management company, which means they own it? <coughs> Or can it be on? Probably either. I think there are a couple of points to, to make. What we've, we've done in drafting 2.7 is taken the slightly unusual step in drafting section 106 agreements, which is, as you know, they bind the land and then, generally speaking, run with the land, and that itself binds successors in title and parties who uh, derive title from it. So if a freeholder grants a long lease uh, to an individual who acquires an individual property, they would also be bound by the agreement unless the agreement says something to the contrary. Now a normal clause in the agreement, um, which uh, <coughs> I have in front of me, but you don't. So let me just read out to you. So this is what one in six permits, is that um, Essentially, it says that um, any owner who ceases to be ceases to have an interest in that land shall not be liable for any subsequent breaches. But what we've done is to exclude 2.7 from that clause, and so Crossstone Properties Limited will always be liable 
as long as that company exists for the breach. So, Councillor Evans, uh, Councillor Price, sorry, apologies, and Sen still exist to the extent that if cross-zone properties were to uh, go into liquidation or cease to exist, we wouldn't have recourse to them, but we would still continue to have recourse to other successors in title. Now, that well may be the freehold owner, or it well may be a management company, and under 2.9, it has to be, the open space has to be retained together with the other common parts of the land. We think say for seeking a bond now or seeking a guarantor from cross stones properties that is probably as far as we can reasonably go to ensure essentially that when when this is disposed to individual owner occupiers there is a strong understanding and settlement in terms of ongoing management such that cross stone properties don't have to continue to pay out in the future if in the event that the open space ceases to be maintained to the standards set out in the approved public open space management plan. So, Mr. Chair, can I just clarify that? Are you suggesting that um, cross stands will actually, uh, when transferring this to a, um, a company to maintain it, that the owners of those properties will have to pay that cost each year to that company? Yes. yes. That is one possibility, yes. But the, the, the council, essentially through cross-stone properties, will, will always have the potential to bear the responsibility and liability in the event that the council step in, because 2.7 is essentially affording the council step-in rights to come in, make good those, the, the repairs to the extent is approved in the management plan and either recover the expenses from either cross stone limited cross stone properties or successors in title. Because I understand, I, t I totally un understand when you have a development and there's grass areas around the frontage of it and trees and all the rest of it, is that the individual house owners pay a contribution for that being maintained when the developer transfers that to somebody else to maintain. But this is not like that, is it? It's a totally different piece of land. It's not, not it's, it's public open space. Um, that's why I wasn't expecting them to have to pay for it. I'm, I'm, if they do, fair enough, it's up to the developer, how they develop it and work it out, but I wasn't thinking of it happening that way. Well, I think that we consider that's the most advantageous way to secure the, the proper maintenance of this open space. Yeah. I've assumed all along that, that the individual 21 properties or whatever will pay a sum of money for the maintenance of anything around the site and the open space. Otherwise, the management company is not going to take it on. I, I, going to give them any money to manage it. I, I, I understand that bit of it, yeah. So I presume that anybody buying a house there is going to look very seriously at just how much extra cost they're going to have to pay on top of their mortgage or whatever. Mm -hmm. Same as rocking and weighing wet and dry. They do exactly the same. Thing. Right, are we all in the middle of Providing our lawyers are happy with that, that condition is as tight as it can be in legalistic terms, I'm happy. <laughs> can I have some caveats? <laughs> very happy for the Subject to the vote is next. I'll second it. Those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. Thank you.